Well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to start this broadcast in earnest in about another 45 seconds, give some of the stragglers time to come in. But I did not want to punish you guys for being early and or on time. So thanks again for your time and attention today. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of great information that's going to help you manage some of the, the workflow through your restaurant and orders and things like that. Uh, we have John Scully, uh, a great guy. We've had several interviews with him, so he's always a wealth of information. I uh, might have to poke him along because he's got so much that he needs to get out there that sometimes we just don't have all the time for it. But uh wanted to thank you guys again and let you know that we will start in about probably about another 30 seconds. Um, so just go ahead and hang in there and uh, we'll see you guys very soon. All right, well, let's let's do this, guys. Hello, and welcome to the PMQ webinar series. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez, and today I have the special honor of being joined once again by John Scully, owner and chief cook and bottle washer at Pizza Cloud. Say hello, John. Hello. There he is. All right. So first off, I'd like to thank everyone for their time and attention. Today, we're going to learn how IP phone services have changed over the years. We're also going to answer uh, the following questions. Why are tens of thousands of businesses switching to, uh, from legacy phone services to hosted IP phone services like Pizza Cloud? The advantage of using advanced phone system features to increase revenue and improve customer satisfaction, as well as why cellular backup internet is more valuable every year and call centers. Will they work for you? So I do wanna let everybody know as uh, usual that you can ask your questions in real time using the questions tab on your dashboard. It's either on the left or right hand side of your screen, however you have it configured. Go ahead and write your questions in the questions tab. I'll moderate them and I'll make sure that John gets to them at the very end of the presentation. Unless it's super urgent, I'll jump right in and make sure he answers it right away. But uh, without further ado, take it away, John. All right. All right, let me give a really quick intro on uh, my background, background of Pizza Cloud. Uh, I've been in telecom for about 35 years uh, in IT for more than 40 years. And uh, this is my third company uh, involved in voice over IP. I started this company in 2014 to focus on this industry, pizza restaurants in particular, and any similar uh, phone heavy carry out delivery restaurants because of course you have different needs than regular businesses. And as you know, when you're working with regular phone companies, if you use Vonage or Packetate or other just regular business voice over IP companies, they have most of the same feature set that we do, but not quite. It doesn't really fit your needs. They don't use them to fit your needs the way we do. Okay, so I'm going to move fairly quickly here because I do have a lot of material uh, I'm going to try to cover. Um, did that. Uh, so one thing I want to mention is our size. Uh, people have a tendency to ask, you know, how large we are. They assume that we're a very small company. This is a snapshot I did um, for a, an interview I was was doing back in December. And so at like 5 p.m. or 8 p.m. Eastern on a Friday, we had handled 275,000 phone calls on one of our two switch clusters. So on a busy day today, we run 600, 700,000 calls in one day um, by the end of the day, because obviously we serve people nationwide. So we have people in all the time zones. Uh, and so busy hours were just starting on the West Coast when I took that snapshot. Okay, so let's talk about the problems that we are trying to solve for people. Uh, you know, some people have different issues in the restaurants. The two primary ones are lost calls, you know, and abandoned calls. People who are waiting to be answered and hang up before you ever answer, or they're abandoned on hold. You you know, the restaurants where you're snatching up every call saying, thank you for calling, please hold throw them on hold, and then they sit there for eight or 10 minutes and hang up. Those customers, it's worse than not answering them up front because they're they're really upset because you did answer, then you forgot about them. 
Next issue is on add-ons. Uh, you know, every restaurant tells their staff uh, to always ask for the upsell. You know, would you like to add breadsticks, appetizers, dessert items, things like that? And your staff may do that at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, but come 5 p.m. on Friday, there's multiple lines ringing, there's people at the counter, they stop doing that. And, and you know that, and you understand it. But we have features in the system that can help with that so that customers ask for more of the add-ons and we raise your average ticket price. Then there's the aspect of labor costs. Using the features of the phone system to improve efficiency, possibly having fewer labor hours, that really comes into the uh, call center features. And uh, handling unexpected situations, such as all of last year, we peaked at making two to 300 custom changes a week for our, uh, our customers for several months when you all were getting thrashed around by your governors with the rule changes, you know, dining rooms open and closed and pick up inside the store or only curbside pickup. We did a lot of custom work to help our customers get through that. And uh, in any future issues, we can help with that as well. Then we're going to talk about cellular backup internet, uh, how that can be used to keep your phones, web orders, and credit cards working when your primary internet fails. So like I said, there's a lot to cover. I want to start with a quick discussion of what is hosted PBX versus just voice over IP versus other services. I want to start with the other. If you have, quote, regular business lines from Comcast, Uverse, Spectrum, or any other IP, you know, internet service provider, they really are a form of voice over IP. It may be handed off as copper to you and plugged into your, you know, 20 year old four line AT&T analog phones, but it's still voice over IP once it hits their box. And you know that if your phone lines go down when your internet goes down. That's one of the issues that we solve. So in general, any phone line that's no longer coming down the street on copper lines is some kind of internet phone service. Almost all new regular business lines are voice over IP because it's so much less expensive for them to put in and maintain. They don't want to do copper lines. Hosted PBX is going one step further. Instead of just handing off phone lines to you, <coughs> excuse me, the phone system is in the cloud connected to the IP phones in your store. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, the advantages to hosted PBX are that you get the features of an expensive high-end business phone system without high upfront cost. The features I'm talking about are things like call recording, playing start of call upsell messages, greetings, and other information. That was a big part of what we did through the pandemic to get information out to people instead of your staff having to do it. Then there's call queuing, auto answering, on hold music and message loops, and the fact that you can manage the system from anywhere. So you can make a change from home in the morning. We can make the changes from here. It's not like a, you know, an old Toshiba business phone system where someone needs to come into your store and plug in a laptop to make changes to the phone system. And of course, you have detailed reports that show how you're doing on answering calls. Average speed of answer, how many calls you're losing, et cetera. And like I said, the ability to handle emergencies in a much more structured way. <coughs> so how can the phone features actually increase revenue? Answer to that depends on your current situation. Uh, I just had a call with someone not 20 minutes ago who has two phone lines in her store. She has a large, she's an independent operator, but she has a large high volume store. She has two phone lines. She said she has constant complaints about busy signals. So she is losing business because people can't reach her restaurant. 
She also has trouble when people do get through that all they hear is ringing until the staff answers. And they have very long wait times uh, before they get to the phone. So even when someone's not getting a busy signal, they may just listen to ringing for 90 seconds, then hang up. Both of those situations are, are obviously costing uh, revenue. And in the case of a customer who can't get through to you and then calls someone else and does get through, they may never come back. You may burn that customer forever. So those are two of the primary things that we fix <clears throat> because we we start with giving you 10 phone lines more if you need them. For most stores, that's far more than they need, but that's the point. On the busiest hour of the busiest day of the year, no one gets a busy signal. And then in terms of the long wait times, that's where we use the other features, the call queuing and auto answering, which I'll go into. Then there's the add-ons. We make heavy use uh, for customers that want it of start of call upsell messages. And not just one message, you can have a whole set of them. And the system picks one at random for each caller. So one person hears, you know, thank you for calling, add a salad with your order today. The next person, thank you for calling, add an order of our, you know, nuclear hot wings. Next person might hear a dessert item or, you know, breadsticks or whatever. And we do that because people get stuck in a rut. You know, the more times they hear about different add-on items, the more likely they are to pick more than one add-on item on a given order. Those things make a difference. When we turn that feature on for existing customers, they usually tell us they saw another 500 to $750 a month increase in revenue from just that feature. So that, that feature alone can pay for the whole system, everything, multiple times over every month. Then you get into the more complicated parts of the call flow, the call queuing and auto answering. Uh, best way to describe this is with an example. So someone calls in, they hear, thank you for calling Super Pizza, try our new squid poppers tonight. Then they hear ringing and the phones in the store start to ring. If you do not pick up and say three rings, the system picks up with a custom or default message. Sorry for the delay. Please stand the line. We'll be right with you. Then they hear your music and message loop, which we'll create for you, by the way. So from the caller's perspective, they've been answered and are on hold. Your staff did not have to interrupt one person, put them on hold, pick one other line, put it on hold, and go back to the first line. You deal with the customer you're talking to. You let the system juggle the calls. But the caller, they're not just hearing a ringing phone. They've been answered. They're on hold. Phones in front of you are still ringing or beeping if that's what you want. But the caller will wait. If it takes you three or four minutes to get to that call, they're not going to be pissed when you get to them because they got picked up and they're not just listening to an annoying ring. So that helps a great deal. Because of how peaky the traffic is, you, you know, one of the things is in your store, you'll, you'll be sitting there and have no calls, then you have three calls, and you have no calls, and you have four calls. Uh, this simple feature helps spread it out and, and deal with the fact that you've got maybe two people answering phones, and you're going back and forth between no calls and multiple calls. All the features that we have can be customized to your needs. Um, let's say you just add web ordering. Then perhaps every caller should hear a mention. You know, we now have web ordering. Go to your website to try to push them from the phones to the web ordering. The, actually, the woman that I spoke to just before this webinar, that was the other thing. She's about to add web ordering. She's going to change POS systems because her current one doesn't have any kind of web ordering. She's going to switch, add web ordering. So I mentioned that to her uh, because that'll help her situation with the phones. You can do uh, special event, you know, notifications, and then all those things we did during the pandemic. So a very common thing we did was about the curbside pickup. 
So callers would hear, you know, thank you for calling. If you have arrived for curbside pickup, press one. To place an order, press two. To hear what we're doing, blah, 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 press three. So when they press one for curbside pickup, that they've arrived for curbside pickup, maybe we ring the same phones, but with a different ringtone and bump that caller to the head of the queue. Maybe we ring it to just a cordless phone that the runner is carrying. So new order calls are going to the three phones at the POS stations. Curbside pickup calls are going to this cordless phone that a different person is carrying, and that's mostly what they're doing when it's busy is running stuff out. We, we, like I said, we were making two or 300 custom changes a week to kind of help people settle in. And of course, we'd make multiple changes for the same people because you were getting yanked around. Um, we had customers report that those, those features made a significant difference in their ability to kind of weather the storm. Uh, that's going into the same detail because one of the things we did is we sent emails out to all of our customers listing four or five things that, you know, you would not think of perhaps. So we said, here are some things we could do very easily. We could do this, do this, do this, just reply back to this email and tell us if you want one of them or if you think of something else and uh, made a difference. One of the other things was helping uh, stores have one or two people work from home to take orders. Depending on your POS system, that may be easy, may be difficult. There may be some cost. It may be completely free. In a lot of cases, it was as simple as someone at home using remote desktop to take over, say, the station in the office. And we're routing the calls either to a phone they took home or to their cell phone and let them take as many of the calls as they can. <clears throat> and then if they're busy, then it would still ring in the store, that kind of thing. But try to offload some of it to get a few people out of the store. The next big thing that we do is cellular backup internet. We always put in a separate router that has a cellular data modem in it. And we put it in in such a way that we're protecting the phones, your web ordering, your credit card processing. Basically, we're going to keep your POS system fully functional and the phones fully functional when your primary internet fails. This is more and more important today because every year that goes by, a larger percentage of orders, as you know, are coming from the web, one way or the other. They're either on your web ordering, their Uber Eats, their Grubhub, um, whatever it is. It's coming through the internet to get to your store. If your internet's down, you're losing those orders. If you have internet phones, those are down as well. So whether you're with Pizza Cloud or not, you really should have cellular backup internet. And uh, we do have some chains where they'll say, okay, well, 50 of our stores are locked into a contract for the next three years with a different company, but we want to put the cellular backup in now. And we'll just put in the cellular backup, and then as the stores come out of contract, they may move them over to us for the for the phone service. So this is just a quick picture to kind of show what we're talking about there. We put our backup router in between your internet modem and the firewall for your POS system. We don't put the phones on your POS network. Our phones are not behind your POS firewall because that will just royally annoy your POS vendor. <laughs> um, but it's what most VoIP companies do is they'll just ship you phones and say, just plug them in. If the phones are connected to our router, it's connecting them to our data centers, making them work really well. But then your primary internet and the built-in cellular modem is there so that when the internet fails, it just flips over to cellular so quickly you don't even drop calls in progress on the phones. Uh, I already mentioned this, that we can allow people to work from home. We have a fair number of owners, um, sometimes single unit operators, sometimes people that have two or three locations where they'll have a phone at home and uh, either they or a family member will sign on and uh, take orders during busy hours from home. Uh, 
it's a great way to offload for just a couple of hours because, as you know, it's it can be really annoying to have somebody drive in just for three hours. But they can sit there at home and be taking calls for a couple of different stores. And that's without using a real call center type setup. It's just a phone, same phone you have in the store. It'll work at home. And uh, again, they usually use remote desktop to take over a station in the store. So there's no extra cost for a POS system or anything like that. Then we get into real call centers. So a call center is centralizing traffic. Whether they're your employees or someone else's, it's taking the phone traffic from multiple stores and bringing them together into a call center. We have a unique solution here in that it's the same phone system in your store and in the call center. With most outside, you know, outsourced call center companies, you're simply forwarding your phones from your store to a number they give you at the call center. And it's blind. You don't know what's happening with it. You're just throwing it out into the wind. With us, the call is still coming in to your store's hosted phone system. It's looking at the normal things. Is it a holiday? No. Are you open? Yes. Then it looks at the call center. Is the call center manned? Because uh, if this call is at 2 o'clock in the morning and the call center is only manned till midnight, the call is going to ring to the store. It can also look at how many calls are waiting, uh, what's the longest waiting call, whatever business rules you want to apply so that we're flowing calls back to the store if the call center is unexpectedly slammed. And, of course, we also give you kind of a backdoor phone number at the store. We'll give you additional phone numbers at the store at no extra cost for you to use for vendors, drivers, things like that to call. Because when Uber Eats calls, you don't want that to go to the call center. You want it to go to the store. And if a driver's calling because they can't find an address, they need to talk to you, not someone in the call center. Whether it's your staff in the call center or not, you really want that call at the store. So we have a lot of very subtle controls that we just set based on what you want. We have chains. Um, we have call centers ranging from four locations in the call center to 500 growing towards 5,000. Uh, one of the largest chains in the country is moving to call center for virtually all their locations um, with one of our call center partners. Now, that particular one, an exact quote from them is, we suck at answering our phones. We cannot fix it. We've given up. We have to get all the calls out of the store. I never want a call to ring into the store unless it's a driver or a vendor or it's transferred back because the caller has to speak to the manager. Okay, so for them, it's set. Everything goes to the call center. We have other people where they're like, no, if the call center is busy, I want it to overflow to the store. I want the customer call answered as quickly as possible at the lowest total cost. So we set those things based on what you want, and we go through that with you. Um, all calls are recorded in the call center as well. So whether the call is being answered in your store or in the call center, you go to one spot and you can listen to recorded calls. So I could really get down into the weeds on some of these things. I'm going to show fairly quickly some of the displays. This is a supervisor display, not the overhead one. This is what a, a supervisor in the call center has up in front of them, where they can see the queue, how many positions are staffed, people are in each state available, ringing, talking, et cetera. How many calls, you know, the call stats for the current 15-minute interval, call stats for the today to now, previous intervals, and then down at the bottom, they see all the agents. It actually goes way down. I just cut it off for this. The agents, their state, who they're talking to, calls that are in queue, it, it's very detailed, so the supervisors can see what's going on. 
Then for wallboard displays, this can just be things that you might be watching from home. So you can see in general what's happening and also have maybe up on a big overhead in the call center. And again, when I say you, I'm going to get into the different types of call centers because sometimes it's your call center. Sometimes it's outsourced call center, depending on what you want. But these are the wallboard displays. So everyone can see what's going on. And again, you're seeing the, the kind of cues how many agents are in each state, and then the whole day, the current 15-minute interval, and the previous, the, the last four intervals, including the current one. Uh, so you can see this particular call center, like they had lost 43 out of 1,180 calls uh, over the day. This is the state of all the agents that are signed on right now. Uh, by the way, if you went back and you looked at those 43 calls, odds are that a solid 30 of them it's a robocall. They hung up in five or six seconds. As soon as it realized it wasn't hearing ringing and it wasn't going to get a person, it would just hang up. Okay, so why would you do a call center? Because the the normal call flow in a pizza restaurant is just about the worst possible situation for doing a good job of answering calls. The call volume is too high for one person, but too low to be efficient. It's very peaky. It goes back and forth between no calls and four or five calls at the same time. There's a tremendous uh, difference between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., particularly on Friday. There's the, the difference between a Tuesday and a Friday. So you, you know the difficulty in staffing for it. And the staff is multitasking. You know, they're not focused on the phones. They're making product. They're Take, taking money, they're handling stuff coming in from Uber Eats tablets, and they're answering phones. So it's just the worst possible situation. When you start combining the traffic from multiple locations, you get huge efficiencies in multiple ways. One of them is it takes about half the labor hours maybe 50, 60% of the number of labor hours to answer the same traffic if you're aggregating from multiple stores. And that's because, again, all those little peaks and valleys start averaging out and statistics start working for you instead of against you. Then one of the things that's interesting is we tend to see the average ticket in the call center 2 to $4 higher than the average ticket in the store. Uh, reason for that is because the agents are not distracted. They're focused. They're supervised to always ask for the upsell. Uh, they're not rushing people off the phone. So you tend to get a higher average ticket. Uh, usually, even when you're using an outsourced call center where you're paying someone to take these calls for you, you're in the black. If it's a well-run call center, they're doing their job right, then your increased margin from the higher ticket is more than what you're paying the call center to take it. And you're straight up in the black on it, not even counting the fact that you may be getting more orders because you're not losing calls. You may have lower staffing costs um, and all the other aspects to it. Uh, I'm going to try to just brush over this. There's some industry standard formulas, uh, Erlang C formula from Robert Erlang, a brilliant guy who worked for AT&T in the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s, about how many agents are needed to handle call flow. The inputs are number of calls per hour, um, the uh, length of the calls, the number of agents, you know, the, how long you're willing to let a call's wait to be happy with it, that's the service level. And it uh, outputs how many agents it thinks you need. So example I'm going to use here is chain with 15 large high volume locations. Let's say that at peak they get 50 calls per hour per store. And because they have a complex menu, the average call time is, say, two and a half minutes. Erlang C would tell you you need four people in each store to get 85% of the calls answered in 15 seconds, which is a little less than three rings. 
So that's 60 people total. But if you centralize it, now it's 750 calls per hour in one big group. It only takes 36 people instead of 60, and you answer them faster. So, you know, again, on the individual stores, you need about four people. And if you drop from four to three, the average wait time jumps a lot from 15 seconds to 80 seconds. Drop down to two and it gets really bad. Once you centralize it, it's much less sensitive. And of course, usually what happens is the call center is not staffing at that number. They might staff up at 38 or 39. So they have almost no delay at all. Uh, in a ideal world, in a call center, when an agent hangs up from one call and goes available, there's always a call waiting. So the agent's never waiting, but no caller waits more than a few seconds. The big advantage in the call center labor-wise, is that you have very high labor utilization. Uh, in the store, you might be sitting on 30% labor utilization for people answering phones. In the call center, it might be 75 or 80%. And again, with us, we can overflow calls back to the store. So the call center doesn't have to be staffed to handle unexpected peaks. And, and the decision on that is based on how aggressive you want it to be. So let's go back to the types of call centers. There's two basic types. In-house call center, it's still your staff, but you're centralizing it. We have maybe 10 of these operating right now, ranging from people with just three or four locations, and they've put three, four, five stations in a large office in one of their stores, and they're running it as a small call center. Um, and again, if they're staffed, the system is delivering as many calls as it can to them and overflowing back to the stores the call came in on. If they don't staff it, they go to the store. Because should they staff that call center at, say, 10 a.m. on a Tuesday? Maybe not. It might not make sense. Just let the calls go to the store. And then whenever call volume gets high, they have people scheduled in there and customers are happy, labor cost is lower, no busy signals, no lost calls, and uh, their revenue goes up. Oh, I should say the other end of the spectrum on the in-house, we have people with uh, 160 stores that are in the middle of doing a call center. Now, what they're doing is interesting. Most of their stores are in the, are in the uh, West Coast and Northwest. A lot of stores in Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, um, places like that, where they're paying more than $15 an hour now, and they can't get people. They're moving their headquarters to Texas, and they want to do a call center because they know they can get all the people they want for more like $10 or $11 an hour and uh, do a much better job of answering the calls and be happy with it. But they want to maintain control. Other people, they just don't want that hassle. They don't want to run the call center. They want to outsource. So it's the flow is all the same. It's simply not your employees in the call center. It's someone else's facility and, uh, and so on. Now, I will say the large chain we're dealing with, who already has 500 plus locations on the call center, their primary driver was cost and the agents in that call center are overseas. That's not normally what I like to do, but if that's you know what the customer wants, okay, fine. Uh, we also have US-based call centers um, available. And so here, where you're using a, an outsourced call center, what you want is that they're charging you either by the call or by the order. So, you can expect to pay, based on the complexity of your menu, somewhere between maybe a dollar and a dollar fifty an order for them to take the the call for you. The important thing there on the financials is if your average ticket is three or four dollars higher when they take it than when you take it in the store, then you're in the black on that, not even counting any labor savings, et cetera. 
the key thing to doing a, a actually let me mention the last type a virtual call center we've tried this five times now with five different ai companies this is about having uh, an artificial intelligence auto attendant system taking the order think of it like telling alexa or you know google home what to order the systems are surprisingly good, but I'm going to say they're not good enough yet. And they're too expensive. Every one of these AI systems, they charge too much. They're way too impressed with their own technology. And they think they can charge two bucks an order. Or sometimes it's 7%. Oh, we only charge 7% of the gross ticket. Well, if your average ticket's 30 bucks, they're charging you $2.10 to take that order. You could have a human do it for a buck 25 or a buck 50. So why would you use them? And the reality is far too many of the callers don't want to place their pizza order with a robot. If they wanted to do that, they would just order online. They called because they want to talk to somebody. And so they're sitting there listening to the robot and they're hitting 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 until the system transfers them to the store. So today I'm going to say virtual call centers are not ready, but they will be like self-driving semis on the highway. We have to accept the fact that it will be a reality, but uh, they're not there yet. So if you're interested in more information on that, reach out to me directly. I'll talk to you about it. But today I would say use a human call center, not, not virtual. Okay, the biggest hurdle to doing a call center, whether it's your own call center, your own staff, or outsource, is your POS system. You think about what happens today in your store. <clears throat> call comes in, the R system passes the caller ID name and number to the POS system, it pops up the customer account. You take their order and it's attached to the same customer and you're able to say, I see your last order was this. Would you like to repeat it? Great. You know, boom, you're done. In the call center, I have to tell the POS system that that agent has in front of them. Here's a call, call ID, name and number. I just delivered it to this station and it's for store number 17. And then that station has to be able to connect to the POS system for store number 17 and take that order and stick it into the POS system. It either has to be a direct support built into the POS system, which is available in only three POS systems today, or it has to be kind of a custom call center POS system that's using API connections, it kind of hooking into the POS system the same way that Grubhub or Uber Eats does today, or, or it's a checkmate or one of these systems to allow web orders to third party web orders to be pushed directly into the POS system. What does not work at all well is using web ordering. We frequently have people say, well, I'll just have the people in the call center use my web order. And I tell them, okay, Go time yourself taking an order standing in the store at your POS system. Now time yourself taking an order for someone with the web order. It's going to be three or four minutes longer per call. You're going to take a 90-second call and turn it into a five-minute call because it's not tying to the same one. You have to get their address. <laughs> you have to get their phone number. You have to type all that stuff in manually. It's it, and the whole flow, you know how it is. The POS system is designed for speed. It's optimized every possible way, whereas the web ordering is optimized for slow perusal. It's got big, beautiful pictures of the products and so on. It's just not meant for a call center. We also have people say, well, for my 17 stores, each agent in the call center will have remote desktop to each of my 17 stores, and I'm like, time out, time out. No, they won't, because <laughs> there is just no way that's going to work. It, it's got to be supported. So uh, 
Only a handful of POS systems directly support it today. I am in projects with three other POS systems to add direct support. So if you're interested in doing this, reach out to me, talk to me. Uh, I may be able to help get your POS system company to support it, or I may already be in the middle of that and be testing. So they might tell you, no, we don't have that, but it might be a month away because I'm already working with them. We actually have had entire chains switch POS vendors. We had a hundred store chain change POS vendors because their vendor said, nope, we don't support call center and we're not going to. And the, the owner of the chain said, well, we're doing a call center. So I will change POS vendors if you don't. And his account rep from the POS company said, huh, no, you won't. An hour later, he'd signed with a different POS vendor. That was at the Pizza Expo in 2019. So, you know, he'd made the decision to do call center because for that chain, it was like a $400,000 a month financial benefit by doing a call center. That was the math they'd done. I agreed with them. They were not off base on that. And uh, they weren't going to be told, no, you're not allowed to do it by their POS vendor. Um. This is actually what I just mentioned, that the POS system has to support it. I don't want to go through what that list is right now because it is a moving target. So ask me and we'll let you know. Okay, that, oh, bad header on that one. Um, that's, I know I moved kind of fast. I apologize for that, but I wanted to leave time for questions. So that kind of covered most of the uh, things I had prepared. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> I got my mic here. Yes, uh, there are actually a couple questions. And uh, it's funny because I'm responding to uh, uh, one of the, the attendees who was asking which PO systems support that functionality. But I think you just answered that in your last sentence before, <laughs> before so, coming back. So uh, I'll, go so ahead and, I'll go ahead and say, I'll go ahead and say that Arrow supports it directly, does it extremely mm -hmm. well. Food tech supports it, um, but they have, they are, we're just rolling out live. They just put it into production. We've got a chain just going live with food tech. I'm not entirely sure that they have nailed down how they want to charge for it. <laughs> so again, if you ask your, if you're with food tech and you ask them, they might say, nope, I don't know what you're talking about, but they're yeah. about to. Well, it's like you said, it's kind of a moving um, target at this point. So it is. It is. Then there's there's others where we can do it, but it's through API hooks. And so Thrive, a few others, uh, we can do it. And it's 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 not what I call 100% functionality, but maybe it's 80%. And we do have live. We have a call center live uh, handling 30, 40 Thrive stores, um, mm -hmm. and it works fine. Um, but, well, we uh, do, yeah. We, we do have about uh, six or so other questions. So um, we do have the information up there. You can reach out to uh, to John Scully or Pizza Cloud at 866-511-5521. Uh, sales at pizzacloud.net or visit the website at www.pizzacloud.net. Um, so you keep the questions coming in. I did want to answer. I'm trying to answer them in the, the order that they did come in. But um, we have one from an attendee. Who would question. be your biggest comp? I'm sorry? I see a question. Somebody just asked me, uh, Daniel from Tijuana. We have eight yeah. pizza restaurants. Question is, is this available in Tijuana? I would need to check. Um, Mexico is actually, so on the one hand, the answer is yes. We could definitely do this there. Um, the Mexican government owned telephone system, as you know, is um, a monopoly. <laughs> And they make it a little bit difficult, but uh, very possibly, yes. Uh, I would need to talk to you directly about that, but uh, I would say, yes, we could do it. Pricing may be a little bit different. There may be a few little things to deal with, but yes, we could. Awesome. Well, yeah, that was, he was definitely when I was getting ready to get to, but um, I, I did have like one of the first ones that came in. Uh, um, 
who would be i guess who would be your biggest competition um but i guess the better question is are you guys just in the u.s which again i guess you just kind of answered you can i guess it depends i guess it depends right so right so u.s and canada uh 100 coverage we can do anything in canada that we do in the u.s uh mexico we can do beyond that it starts getting a little twitchy um uh, I, you know, do I want to do it in European countries and so on? No, <laughs> I don't. <Okay. laughs> um, I just don't. But uh, yeah, but it might be just one of those case by case bases where you have to look at it and either already know or might pique your interest. So Mexico, or right. I'm sorry, U.S. and Canada, it seems like is solid right now for 100%. Pizza, right? Solid, no problem. Yep. Okay. Um, I, this, this one's, uh, really good. I like, it's like, what kind of equipment do you have to purchase? I think you might've mentioned that early on, but what kind of equipment do you have to purchase to get your service? And do you have to buy the phone software, et cetera? I mean, what kind of costs go along with this service? Okay. Yeah. And I, and I hadn't done a slide on that cause I'm trying not to make this kind of webinar be too salesy, but yeah. So, so as you know, there's two primary philosophies in how companies tell companies price things like this. One is where they say, and we're going to give you free equipment, which there is no such thing. It means they're just going to have a much higher monthly cost, lock you into a term and roll the equipment into the monthly cost. That's not the model we normally use. Uh, we charge for the equipment up front. We charge a very reasonable price for it, far below the market price. And then we have a low monthly cost, although we can do equipment rental for people that want to do that. One of the reasons we do it that way is we do not lock our customers into a term. So we keep our customers the way you keep your customers by keeping you happy. Uh, if you ever want to leave us, we will assist you in making a smooth transition to another vendor because the last thing we want, again, just like you, the last thing we want is a pissed off ex-customer. If you wanted to go somewhere else, we at least want to part on friendly terms. I will say that in the last three years, we have not had a single customer leave us for another vendor, not one. In the last three years, we've grown, we've almost tripled. That's like 240% uh, growth in three years. And we have not had a single customer leave us for another vendor. So uh, in terms of the actual cost, so equipment cost, the biggest single chunk is the cellular backup router. We use Peplink. Uh, cellular backup routers, they are the best ones. They are also the lowest cost, but they're the, that's not why we pick them. We pick them because they're the best features, best remote management. So the cellular backup router is $430. The IP phones, the most common model people select is the Yealink T53. Those are $120. And again, I think the MSRP on the T53 is $179. We sell it for $120. Uh, and then there's miscellaneous little other things, but that's the primary cost. Okay. So someone someone with three, four, four phones with setup and configuration and everything, you know, you might be twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. We can send an installer to do it, but what we prefer to do is work with your IT guys, right? If if you have someone that if you needed to pull a cable, you were adding a POS station or adding a printer, you have a guy, that's who we want to install the phones. They're just network devices after all. So yeah. it makes a lot more sense for it to be your guy who knows your store, knows where the cables go, than my sending somebody in blind. And they're going to give you a lower price than again, if I send someone in blind. Now the monthly service, we give you 10 phone lines uh, that's where we start, 10 phone lines, which is far more than you you probably need, but that's deliberate. All the features, the call queuing, call recording, us doing a reasonable number of media files for you, you know, doing the on-hold messaging and all that. Uh, the cellular backup internet is all in there for $155 a month. So a uh, very reasonable price. Yeah. And by the way, we also do 24-7 support, and I mean a human answers. If you call at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, uh, you're, you will hit an auto attendant at that point that says, 
if this is, you know, not, if this is not a service affecting thing, uh, press one and leave us a voicemail or send an email to support. If, if this is a service call, if you, you need assistance now, press two to reach the tech on call and you will reach a human as opposed to the way it probably is with your POS company, where you would hit voicemail, leave a message and sit there with your head on fire, waiting for someone to call you back for half an hour. We don't, we don't do that. Well, that's, yeah, so, it's always you nice know, to we try to get somebody any, at any time yeah. right there. So, yeah. And the, that is the normal price. Uh, it can go up a little bit for a large high volume store with a lot of phones. It can go down for small locations that are very low volume. But in general, if you're like three to six phones, that, that kind of size, you're kind of standard, most, most common size pizza restaurant, it's that same price. We don't nickel and dime our customers on features. All the features are included and we don't go over that price unless you have more than six phones and you have more than six because you use them. In other words, we'll have someone say, well, we've got three party rooms and there's a phone in each party room, but I actually want those limited so they can't make outside calls. They can only pick up a phone and say, bring more beer, you know? <laughs> um, and obviously, and obviously they don't get inbound calls. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to charge you anything monthly for those phones. Or if you say, well, we've got, an office in the basement and you know, I got a phone over here and a phone over here, but they don't really take inbound calls. I may not charge you anything yeah. for those. We, we try so, to be well, no, very that, reasonable, very flexible. It, well, it sounds like you, you kind of educate the customer too about how many phones that they really maybe need using your system. Yeah. And so that you are not charging them for something that's just going to sit there idle, which is great. And I did want to right. remind the audience that we do got about probably eight minutes more before we're going to end this. So get your questions in there. I do have another one from Todd. Yep. I told you, Todd, you're next. Um, Todd wants to know what the uh, the call volume that the cellular backup can handle. That's a good question because, I mean, I would assume it's kind of empty. Okay. But, um, so I mean, is that a bandwidth each, thing? I don't know. It, that is. That's a bandwidth thing. So each call in progress uses a little less than 100K up and down of internet right so if you have five phones and all five phones are in use with staff talking to customers you're using a half a meg down half a meg up wow okay. usually on the cellular backup we get five or six meg up and down sometimes as much as 50 meg up and down but usually at least five so it's absolutely not a problem the vast majority of the time the uh, the cellular backup will handle your POS system and the phones with no quality degradation. And of course, the same is also true on your primary internet. Again, you know, if you have even a really low end system, if you have a 10 meg down, two meg up DSL line, everything will work fine. You probably don't want to have public Wi-Fi on it, but other yeah. than that, it'll all work fine. Uh, occasionally, you sure that your staff's not using that particular Wi-Fi, or would you recommend having right. something separate? Right, but of course, today the more common thing is people have you know, fifty meg down, twenty meg up, or eighty meg by twenty-five meg, or something like that, and it's just not an issue. You know, the yeah. over the last two years, the average speeds have gone up so much that that we rarely see congestion issues. Um, you got to move to my neighborhood. The, the, <laughs> I'm looking yeah. for that. <laughs> the, the biggest issue we run into today is when somebody will switch from their regular cable TV to having 12 uh, Apple TVs or Roku TVs or Fire Sticks or something like that. And they don't think about the fact that each one of them is using like 5 meg. They added 12. That's 60. And they only have a 30 meg internet circuit. So all of a sudden it just goes in the toilet and they're like, what's going on? And we're like, well, you're totally hammering your internet. You you need to take your internet up to 100 meg if you're going to have 12 Roku sticks <laughs> running. Right. No. Well, and I think so. what you said there, I mean, the, the main point is, is, is like, what is it? You said uh, 100K up and down for one call. So yeah. So five lines, just think about that. Half a meg. 
yeah, that's nothing compared to your average right. internet speed today. It's okay. just nothing. So yeah, I guess the biggest uh, consideration you have to take in is uh, you know what your POS is um, need to, need to use, and then if you know that it, uh, the internet goes down, turning off those TVs and stuff like that. But you know the yeah. phones shouldn't be something you have to think about. Think about what your POS needs to function, and then everything else superfluous. Tell your employees to get off the Wi-Fi and all that jazz. So. Um, so you asked about, there was a question about who our biggest competitor is. I don't think we have one anymore. Um, oh, very good. There was one company. There was one company that targeted the same market that we do. Mm -hmm. They've gone away. Um, they, they, yeah, I won't, I, I won't go into why they went away, but I will <laughs> say we took an awful lot of customers away from them. Okay. Usually infuriated ex customers. When they came to us, uh, but well, at that point, it's not you're not being malicious. At that point, you're uh, just offering a better yeah. quality product. Yeah. So there's other phone companies that there are cheaper phone companies. I mean, there are companies that you can get a really, really cheap handful of crap, and if that's what you want to use to run your hundred thousand dollar a month business, then mm -hmm. more power to you. But yeah. it's you know. Usually not a good idea. In terms of the whole package, in terms of a, a phone company with cellular backup internet who understands your needs, who's focused on your industry, who customized everything to fit your needs and really give you the best bang for the buck, I have no competition. All right. Well, that's it's good to know that you, I mean, and this is what you do, this is what you focus on. There was a, um, uh, a follow-up to that last question from Todd. Uh, he wants to know, is the cellular backup system performance similar or better than a cradle point system? Now, here we're talking about geek stuff that's above my head. So do you, I assume... I, I will address that. I will address that quickly. There's three okay. primary cellular backup solutions. Uh, one is uh, Cisco Meraki, which is massively overpriced and underfeatured. There is cradle point, which is somewhat overpriced and underfeatured, and there's Peplink. Uh, Peplink, I, and I've used all of them. I actually started with Meraki, absolutely hated it. <laughs> then I went to Cradle Point, had some, had some issues. Uh, there were features I needed that I didn't like. And then when I tried talking to the company about bug fixes, they were pretty arrogant and difficult to deal with. Uh, mm. Then I tried Peplink, and I found them to be a much better company and a much better product. The original Peplink cellular backup router, the Max BR1, was actually designed for police cars. Uh, so there were a couple hundred thousand of them in police cars to provide internet for moving vehicles. Mm -hmm. Because of that, they, you know, they're very robust vibration proof, moisture proof, oil and grease proof in a steel case, you know, you can beat on it with a hammer and it keeps working. Um, low cost, easy to manage, um, cloud, completely cloud managed, and it's an excellent company. Um, I've made, I got a dozens and dozens of enhancement suggestions and they've probably implemented half the suggestions that I made. Uh, if I want to get on a, a Google Hangout with uh, administration and engineers, software engineers at the company to talk about why I'm asking for a particular feature, I can do it. Okay. Great product. Absolutely great. Well, that's um, great. Yeah. For, the, I, I thought yeah. Cradle Point was some kind of a tech term, but I guess it's a, it's a company. So it sounds like you've 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 run the gamut, you've run the maze, and you found the one that seems to work best for your product for the customer. Yep. At this point, um, I guess um, at this point, if there are no other questions, um, I think there's just one more. Um, this is a question that um, actually it's it's one for me. I'm not sure if you mentioned this, um, uh, but you know you were talking about how you know you can have maybe your managers just answer phone calls from home and stuff like that. Is there any sp particular or special equipment that you need to get for your staff if, you know, they can't come in, but, you know, they want to say, hey, look, I could pick up a couple hours answering phones for you guys. Or can they just do it from so themselves? So there's a couple of, that way? 
you can do it both ways. So mm -hmm. one of the features of our system is that we can add, and you can add easily from the web interface, uh, outside like cell phone numbers as external agents. In other words, um, okay, one of the, 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 one of the ways we'll use that is, let's say you have a lightning hit and the pep wave is blown up you know, your, your internet mode is blown up. The pep wave is blown up. I mean, they're super reliable, but lightning always wins. <laughs> um, actually, we actually, a couple of months ago, someone came in and their phones are down. They call tech support. We're looking at it. And our, our tech says, okay, well go to where the equipment is. Uh, maybe you need to cycle power on the pep wave. Cause it, it looks like it's offline. And the guy goes, no, it's not there. What do you mean? It's not there. It's like, it's not there. <laughs> someone had stolen it. Oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's good, but if it's missing, it's missing. So we're like, okay, because this is like five minutes before he's going to open. It's like, okay, give me three people's cell phone numbers. We put them into the system and it's routing calls to them. Now it's not just a dumb forward like most phone companies would do. Other phone companies say, oh, and if your phones are down, we'll forward calls to a cell phone. Well, what about a Friday evening? You're getting three, four simultaneous calls to a cell phone. That really doesn't help. They end up in voicemail. Yeah. What our system is doing is it calls your cell phone. When you answer, it says, you have an incoming call. Press one to accept this call. If you don't press one, you don't get the call. It pulls it back, goes to the next person. It's, so it's treating those outside cell phones as kind of agents. It's distributing the traffic. This one to you, this one to the next person, this is the next person, right? So that's one of the ways you can have people work from home is just put them in that way. The other thing, though, is if you're going to have someone that this is going to be their job, you have an employee that's great on the phones and they break their leg and they're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to come in for six weeks. Hey, let me just send a phone home with you. And do you have a laptop? Great. Let me send a phone home with you. You can sit at home with a headset on and take orders and you can keep them on the books and offload the yeah. calls and they just have the same phone that that's sitting in the store and again no difference in the monthly cost it's just where is the phone yeah yeah so but in, in, while it's cycling through the traffic i mean is there always a message on hold that's programmable that you can record so i mean we're always looking for that shorter wait time but i mean if it goes up to 30 seconds are they listening to something that's upselling or you know, telling your thing. yes, the caller the caller is in queue, so they're in the same queue that they would be in anyway. It's only yeah, a question okay. of what phones we're ringing. So Absolutely. the caller's hearing your hold music and message, and we're ringing this phone in someone's home. And again, when we do have something where like someone is is doing it at home, they have a button on the phone where they go available and not available. So if they're going to take a restroom break or just they're only going to be on from five to eight, they sit down, they hit a button. Now the system is going to hit them first. If they're available, it rings them. If they're already on the phone, maybe it rings the phones in the store. Again, whatever yeah. you want. Well, it's an intuitive kind of a, a cycle knowing who's who's available when. So, but that's great. I mean, like you said, it, it, especially during the pandemic when they had that, you know, if, you can't have them come in or you could only staff 50% of your staff, you know, you could still have that many people. You still pay them. Yeah. You could still employ them. They're not on premises. So you're not in violation of regulations. So, um, well, John, I see a uh, question from, uh, I see a quick question from Vladimir on, do we provide the oh, call center oh, service right or just there, facilitate it? I'm yep. sorry. Yeah. He said, uh, so, you, I'm sorry. I was oh, yeah, well, we're talking mean, to you. Clarify if you provide the call center service or just facilitate it. So go ahead. I'm sorry, John. So I used to build and run the phone systems in thousand seat call centers. And I decided back then that I would never be stupid enough to have a thousand employees in one facility myself. <laughs> so no, I don't run the, <laughs> I don't run the call center. We provide it. So we have several companies that we can connect you with where they have our phone system in their call center. So the agents are on our phone system and you're contracted with them. We'll hook you up with them. You're contracted with them. You're paying them to take the orders. Uh, we're handling the call flow back and forth. 
Uh, and again, that way we can make it function however you want it to work. And, and it all functions the same whether you want to do your own call center or use an outsourced call center. Uh, it's going to be the yeah. same features, same software, everything. So. Okay. Well, and that was another one that was up there. Is that I mean, do we have choices of like U.S. versus international call centers? I know we all typically get frustrated yeah. when we get something that's outsourced to India and uh, or some place like that. Just as an example, just because sometimes you can't necessarily understand them. I mean, they do their best and they know English well, but the accents are so thick it becomes frustrating. Can you choose? I will say what call that center I'm, I was very surprised. Yes. Yes, there's. Okay. We have a couple of different companies we work with um, that are. There's actually one POS company that did their own call center, uh, and they're here in the U.S. And uh, so, mm -hmm. if you have that POS system and our phone service, they'll take your orders for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the others, you know, they're more agnostic, obviously. Uh, but yes, there's both U.S. based. There's overseas. I, I will say, I was very surprised. Uh, the the big call center that we're doing like 500 stores, the agents are in Pakistan and you'd never know it. You'd never know yeah. it. They just sound like you're kind of, because I mean, you think about the people in your store anyway, you've got a mixture of native Americans who may have, you know, or I should say just people, uh, American English as a first language who may be all kinds melting of pot. accents anyway. Yeah. yeah. Melting pot, yeah. you know? So uh, I would but say you'd never know on that particular. No, and that's and that's fine. And it was I would just you know not to you know I, I I've dealt with them in the past and it's and it's fine if they they're knowledgeable they know what you need to know. It's just a matter of the of the language barrier sometimes. Um, but there are certain people who kind of get frustrated with that without going into a rabbit hole and and angering other people. Um, because I know I have an accent too, and people have to ask me to repeat myself several times. But uh, you know that that's all the questions that I had seen. Um, I know that uh, Vladimir snuck in there at the last second, but I think uh, I think we're all done. So, John, just a real quick, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to uh, let everybody know the final affirmation from Pizza Cloud and why call centers could work for them, and um, everything. Just kind of summarize everything we just went over. So, I, I mean, I would summarize by saying call centers do not work for everyone. Um, and call centers may or may not be a good solution for independent operators, because the problem is that if you have one store and we're routing your traffic to an outsourced call center, it's going to be in a mixed agent group. So the agents that are answering, they're not only answering for your store, they're answering for a bunch of other stores. I mean, that's the only way the, the math works. Whereas if you're a chain, if you have 10 stores, 20, 30, 100, whatever it is, that call center is going to have dedicated agents for you. So although they're answering for multiple stores, they're all one chain, they're all one menu, they get to know the products and so on. So... Um, the key thing is give us a call. Talk to us about what your pain points are. Um, mm -hmm. You know, again, the woman that I, I spoke to earlier today, her initial question was about call center, but she doesn't need a call center. She just needs a better phone system and a better POS system because she has just multi-line phones. She only has two phone lines, multi-line phones. She needs our service in general. And I think we can solve her problem, especially once she adds the web ordering and, and we start pushing people to use it, we can solve her problem with the phones. Yeah. Well, and, and, so. and, and I maybe even miss, um, uh, misquoted that question. I mean, call centers is only a fraction of what you guys do. Actually, I think the bigger part right. is the IP, uh, IP phone services and the cellular right. internet backup that you guys provide. That's, that's um, just kind of imperative that a lot of people should kind of think about yeah. looking at the, the, Call center depends on your volume. The IP yeah. phone services and uh, cellular internet backup is going to help you regardless if you do one order an hour or a thousand. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to put that in there. I, I kind of mischaracterized. I didn't want it to, to think that this was all about call centers. It's not at all what it was about. But, um, yeah, if anybody wants to reach out and get more information from John, the, the chief cook and bottle washer himself, you guys reach out to 866-511-5521 or sales at pizzacloud.net, or you can visit the website at uh, www.pizzacloud.net. Um, 
I'm Brian Hernandez. This has been the PMQ webinar series for Pizza Cloud. I want to thank our guest again, John Scully. Thank you so much for your time today, John, and all the great information. Um, Thanks. It, I, yeah, you rock, Brian. You did a great job here. You did a great job. I, I, oh, I appreciate it. So smooth. Well, and I definitely appreciate everybody's time and attention today for attending, getting here on time and early, and or just coming in and out. So uh, we'll see you guys again. And also, I did want to let you know that you can find this video if you, you tuned out early or if you came in late. You can find it at pmq.com in the video section, as well as pizzatv.com under the Our Partners section. So it'll be up there as soon as it's uh, done uploading, as soon as we end it here. So We'll see you guys next time in the PMQ webinar series. John, you have a great day, and you can stay safe up there in Columbus. Did all that snow melt yet? Thank you. Uh, yeah, the snow's gone. Okay. <laughs> snow's gone. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye.